Hi, I'm Myrna Loy. I'm an author. I'm a painter. I am a poet. I'm a DJ. And um, I do quite a lot of things, but I won't bore you with the details. Um, today I wanted to revive my book, The Other Side of Tourism. And why is it called The Other Side of Tourism? Basically because I'm born in Britain of Jamaican parents and I kind of think that I'm Jamaican of sorts. Well, I know I'm not Jamaican, but I kind of feel like a part of me is Jamaican. So when I go to Jamaica, I don't want to feel like I'm a tourist, but I was made to feel like I was a tourist. So when I wrote my book, it was like the other side of tourism. So even though I'm not a tourist, I was treated like a tourist because um, they used to call me a foreigner. And the way I behaved was like a tourist, even though I claimed to be a Jamaican and, you know, Jamaica was my team and I wear the collars and we speak the Jamaican and team. When it came down to it, the Britishness um, overruled my Jamaicanness, and I was quite snobberish. I was quite snob. I was snobbish, I should say. I was snobbish. I was supercilious. I was intolerant. Oh, and it's funny because when I wrote the book, it was like a diary. I was there by myself in Jamaica. So every day I wrote exactly how I was feeling. And when I, on reflection, ah, oh, it's not very good, but it is quite amusing if you can look at it from the lighter side. Anyway, I'm going to read a chapter from the book to give you an insight. And if it propels you to Amazon to buy a copy, either the Kindle version or the paperback version, I hope it does. Uh, this chapter is called Buy a Dread. <laughs> Winston called to say he would be at the hotel by three o'clock in the afternoon. I called the receptionist and advised her that I was expecting my nephew and that he should call me when and that he should call me when he arrived. My nephew on my mother's side and who I didn't know very well at the time arrived uncharacteristically on time for a Jamaican three o'clock on the dot. The receptionist called me and I came down to meet him. He was heavy laden with a big bag, forcing him to slouch over. I wondered if he planned to stay over. Are you hungry, I said, a ruse to lure him away from the hotel. I'm sorry you couldn't come to my room. Visitors are not allowed in guest rooms, I continued. Miss dear, this hotel already, you know, he said. I wasn't sure what he meant by that declaration and I wasn't really interested. I had a daily subsistence left of 20, 220 Jamaican dollars, which was enough to treat him for lunch, provided I chose the meal. Your mind was starving. Well, I'm going to treat you to a meal, I said. He didn't seem appreciative. Me need to make a phone call to someone paying them cellular phone. Cellular phone, that's going to cost quite a bit. I didn't respond. Why, may I forget all of this money, you know? May I have to make a transaction? There's a phone in the seagull. You can use that, I suggested. We went in and I waited to be seated while Winston went to use the phone. Anticipating his choice, I ordered a vegetarian meal for Jamaican dollars 95. He came back shortly. Well, why are they on the phone talking foolishness? Well, just hang around and wait. What would you like to drink? I asked, hoping he'd, he'd ask for ice water. Let me see the menu. Suppose he orders a beer or something like that. I wouldn't have enough money. Just get me a lime in the ear, sir. Relieved. I knew I could afford that. He went back to the phone and came back smiling. He had obviously made the connection. Me get to all of my friends, you know. You tell me a session of going on tonight at dead end. You aren't got it? I haven't been anywhere, so I might as well. All right, but me can't take this bag here with me, you know. I have to leave it in at the hotel until later. Okay, I said reluctantly. We ate, I paid, and we left. 
Where do you want to go? I said, showing him no mercy for his burden. Take the bag upstairs for dinner, he appealed. I took it and lugged it to my room. I wondered what was in it. I dumped the heavy monstrosity on the floor. I refreshed myself a little, put on some pants because I didn't want the mosquitoes biting my legs, changed my blouse and returned. Mekwegopso, he said, pointing to the makeshift beach where some street urchins assembled. Here we go, I thought, but I followed him obediently. He stopped. He noticed someone he recognised. Wapmza, ask the man Wapm. You cool man, Irie man. Says what I say. Me die, you know. This unintelligible and invented vocabulary had them riveting in bouts of laughter for about 15 minutes. I noticed that by accentuating the patois, it transformed it into code language. It was the way they communicated when they didn't want non-Jamaicans to understand what they were saying. I understood every word. I was pleased with myself. I qualified to be a Jamaican. Intermittently, Winston put on a, pro a protective arm around the shoulders of one of his acquaintances and whispered. Sporadically, he would lift his head up and twist it from side to side in a sinister fashion, imitating an undercover agent. Occasionally, he would nod in my direction as if to confirm that everything was under control. After about five minutes, I got fed up and told Winston I wanted to go. Since in my exclusion, he decided to introduce me to his brethren. I'm in East this, he boasted. I'm in East this, you know, he boasted. As if he was taking credit for my cultivated appearance. They both stood there provingly, nodding their heads. Big deal, as if I needed their endorsement, I thought. You smoke? his brethren asked. No, I don't, I responded shortly. We walked off the roadside into a secluded spot and found ourselves tempting fate, vegetated on the edge of a cliff overlooking the sea. The scenery was beautiful. The harsh environment was lost in its beauty, and I looked towards the skyline where nebulous buildings formed geometric faces, within which, admonishing, red lights flickered like eyes squinting. The sea silently brushed against the sand and recoiled spontaneously. A man and woman passed, holding hands, laughing. I reminisced for a while. Yeah, so um, that was that little um, chapter called Bio Dread. And of course, Winston is Bio Dread in that. So if you thought it was entertaining, I mean, sometimes when you read it, it's better than um, me trying to speak it because my patois isn't very good. And it could take away some of the... Um, some of the je ne sais quoi. So um, when you read it yourself, you'll be able to put your own slant on it. Okay, and that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the book. Run out and get it before it gets sold out. Amazon, Kindle and paperback. Bye.